Now, a little quiz here. Very, very simple. I just want you to count the number of F's in that paragraph. And actually, I think I'm... I'm so how many F's do you see in that paragraph? Without looking at the answer, 20? 20, 24. 24? Any more guesses? Twenty-eight. How are we so off? How is that possible? The word off. Those little teeny, you know, two little words. Do you ever notice that when you're skimming an email really quickly, you miss things? Also, <clears throat> spell check doesn't know the difference between T-W-O and T-O-O -O and T-O. You can't always rely on that. So tip number three is you've got to check those details. The devil is in the details. Small stuff can turn into big stuff really, really quickly. You want to pay particular attention to things like dates, typos, decimals, names, titles. I was on a major conference call one time. And we're on the call, and there were about 50 people on the call, but there were supposed to be about 300 people on the call. Lo and behold, we found out that the passcode that had been given out, one of the numbers had been transposed. And so most of the people had the wrong passcode. I mean, tiny, tiny detail, but that stopped the call on its tracks. So you definitely want to pay very, very close attention to that. Also, people's names. Do you think people are sensitive about their names? Oh, yes. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> sensitive. What did she say? <laughs> Especially for those names that are tricky, hard to spell or pronounce. You really want to be careful with that. Double check that. We had a huge conference out in Vegas years ago. We had a lot of executives from different uh, areas of the media industry. And we got all the names right but we messed up one of the titles on the name tents. Mm -hmm. Do you think people are sensitive about the titles? Mm -hmm. Woo! We had director instead of VP? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And literally, you could tell that that person was visibly upset for the first hour and a half or so of the conference. And we had to have one of our key resources out getting a new name tent printed because that title was wrong. So again, something that seems so small can turn into something really, really big. So you certainly want to remember to focus on those details. Second one says use checklists. How many of you are like me and you go run into one room in your house to get something and then as soon as you get in the room you forget why you went there? Okay, yes. We all have a little of that old timers. So instead of trying to remember everything, what I do is I try to come up with checklists. So I have a checklist for everything. So for example, when I'm doing a speaking engagement, I have my speaking engagement checklist. So that way, I don't have to try to remember, did I pack my Elmo, and did I pack my business cards in my bio? It's all on my checklist. So the night before, I just check it all off, be sure I've done everything. So try to come up with those. Always leave time to review deliverables, or review whatever your work product is. A lot of times, people will ask us, well, how long will it take you to do that report, and you might say, oh, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Well, it might take you 20, 30 minutes to actually do the report, but what about planning for it, prepping for it? What about reviewing it afterwards? What about if there's an error and you need to go back? So you want to think about some of those elements in terms of the details and the quality. And then, of course, you always want to use technology. I think God invented spell check for sure, okay? You always want to use spell check, grammar check, you know, check those calculations, all of those things. And it sounds silly when I talk about things like grammar, but it's funny. My husband asked me the other day, he was writing something, and he was like, is it lay or lane or laid? You know, remember that when you learned that like in seventh grade? I was like, I don't know what it is. <laughs> But I actually even have a grammar textbook like on my desk just so I can, you know, do a quick check if I need to. And certainly the technology will help. Yes. Then I'm going to go back to your emails. Yes. So be careful <laughs> when you send an email to send it to the correct person. Oh, yes. A, be careful you're sending it to the correct person. But can I add on to that also? 
be really careful with those emails that have been bounced back and forth and back and forth and back and forth maybe 10, 15 times. I've had several situations where an email got sent to me and then I went to review the history of that email and I read some information I shouldn't have read, okay, that was confidential between my client and somebody else. And then I've had other students in some of my classes give me examples where they had that same situation where it was sent to this person who never should have seen some of that history there and they were saying something negative about their client. And it actually ended up going to the client and they actually lost that work as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. You really, really want to be careful with all of those, all of those things.